Bishop John here. Our church looks to the transfiguration theme twice in our liturgical year. The scene of Jesus with Peter, James, and John on the mountain is proclaimed on the Feast of the Transfiguration, August 6th, and again within the Lenten season. The purpose of the proclamation of the Transfiguration on the feast day, August 6th, is really to deliver the message that Christ stands between Moses, the lawgiver, and Elijah, the prophet, as the final authority or summation of the law and the prophets. The ancient Jews would test their theological theories against the law and the prophets. If their theories could not pass the test, they would be disregarded. But if they were held up by the law and the prophets, according to sacred scripture, the proposed theories would be held in high regard. In our gospel for this Sunday, Jesus is the final authority and summation of the law and the prophets. From now on, all teachings and proposals of theology will be weighed against the backdrop of Christ Jesus. In the season of Lent, the church wants to address the transfiguration theme from the perspective of the oncoming passion and death of Christ. In Mark's gospel, Jesus turns to the witnesses of the transfiguration, Peter, James, and John. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. This fresco found in one of the cells of the Dominican friars at San Marco in Florence is a vivid portrayal of the Transfiguration. Painted by Blessed Fra Angelico in the 1400s, the artist shows the centrality of Christ and the rather diminished figures of Moses and Elijah on the left and the right. It is as if they are fading away and Jesus is left standing in the middle. Notice Christ's arms stretched out as if to show his pending crucifixion. Blessed Angelico often included other figures in his painting. Mary, the mother of Jesus, in this example, stands on the left, and Saint Dominic, the father of the artist's religious order, stands on the right. Dominic is often found in Angelico's paintings as one who is deeply contemplating the scriptural religious themes, in this case, spiritually, placing himself within the transfiguration. Of course, the three figures below, Peter, James, and John, are the necessary figures to help complete the transfiguration theme. Why three? Many scholars point to the Old Testament mountain theme of Moses with three companions. Moses had three close men who went up on the mountain with him, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu. And God said to Moses, come up to the Lord and Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and you shall adore afar off. Peter, James, and John are now the companions of Jesus who will witness this scene of the transfiguration on a different mountain, and later the raising of Jairus' daughter, and finally the scene of Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane. Angelico shows a level of fear in Peter, James, and John in this fresco. The Gospel of Mark reads, then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say, they were so terrified. The fear that Jesus' companions felt in this transfiguration theme is nothing compared to the fear that will overcome them when Jesus is arrested, tried, and crucified. The church reintroduces us to the transfiguration theme in this season of Lent in order to prepare us, Christ's new companions, for the Lord's pending doom. The season of Lent invites us to embrace the power of the passion and the cross. Like Mary and Saint Dominic, who are found in this fresco, the church invites us to paint ourselves into the story of Jesus and his transfiguration, as well as his passion and his death. As the old song goes, were you there when they crucified the Lord? How do you paint yourself into these Lenten themes? I invite you to take some time and contemplate these scriptures in Lent. Once again, consider attending a Stations of the Cross in your parish or attending daily Mass in this season. God bless you in this Lenten season.